Thursday, January 25th, 2018. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We remain standing for our prayer. Great. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your provision for our community and thank you for the leaders that you provided for us. Thank you that you're a God of wisdom and a God of justice. God of peace, I pray that you would give wisdom to these proceedings, justice to be done, and I pray that you would give our community peace and prosperity. I pray all this in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That was Pastor Nate. Is it Clear? Clear. 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 Calvary Baptist. Thank you very much for doing that for us. Glad to do it. Okay, approve the uh, minutes of January 11th and 22nd meeting. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shepard? Yes. Pete? Okay, um, this, this is a thing that maybe normally would show up under the budget proceedings, but over at the Juvenile Detention Center, got an issue with insulation. Um, the, the problem is, is that the overhead chases where there's, uh, water lines and sewer vent lines and other various items that, uh, there's a lot of cold air getting in there. There's a risk of those lines freezing. We'd like to get some insulation done. So what, what's changed? The building's been there for a long time. I know. I, I'm, I'm not sure what's changed either, to be honest with you, other than the fact that and, and, you know, we've had this really cold spell. Um, but well, I think we've had them before. Right. I, I just think there's... Um, Why don't I go over and look at it with Gary? Is, okay. Is that Gary's world there? Or not? Yeah, I would say so. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll go over there next week and we'll look and see what... There's got to be something changed. We'll figure out what, it, what happened. Okay, just so you know, this the proposal is uh, for it's four thousand five hundred fifty-five dollars okay. to do four inches of foam insulation around that and the chases. All right, we'll, let, we'll, we'll take a look. Okay. Will you have them get a hold of me then? Yeah, I will. Um, another item that I was just made aware of yesterday, and uh, there was an email that's gone out from auditor's office um, remember last year we changed our um, group term life insurance for all our employers employees from a fifty thousand dollar limit to a seventy five thousand dollar plan um, for whatever reason neither HR auditor's office or of course in my opinion uh, the provider should have made us aware of this is that anything over fifty thousand dollars is considered a taxable fringe benefit uh, it's not based on it, it's a it's a sliding scale if you will uh, based on age um, it's not the full twenty five thousand dollars obviously uh, just to give you an example um, for somebody under the age of twenty five dollars the additional cost added to their w-2 is is shown as a, as a wage is fifteen dollars. Okay, um, for somebody it's forty five through forty nine, it's forty five dollars. Um, somebody fifty five through fifty nine, it's one hundred twenty nine dollars, and seventy and older is six hundred and eighteen dollars. <laughs> Such a really important age bracket. Yeah, well, six hundred eighteen dollars for what? For year. Yeah, as a taxable wage. So that goes on on your W two. Dollars will go on my. Yeah, will go on your W two, exactly. Now, uh, what 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 I've been told is there's currently a um, a bill out there at the federal level to raise that threshold from above fifty thousand to above three hundred thousand. So for seventeen, it's going on your W two. For eighteen. 
It may or may not. We'll have to see. But it sounds like uh, it went through, I believe, the Senate. They've passed it. It's on to the House, and we'll see what happens. It puts the Just so you're aware, if you get anybody calls, wants to know anything about it, well, we're working on getting a message out to all the employees. Let them know this is it's going to be additional item under W-2 for 2017. That's all I got. Is anybody coming? Not that long. Okay, I didn't know if we should put the fifty resolution. Thank you. Danielle, if you just put that on top of the agenda that I got taped on there, mm -hmm. I can zoom in or out for you. Go for it. Waiting for our technology to catch up with oh, us there a little sorry. bit. But Proceed. Thank you. Good morning. Um, we've been meeting with departments, and a um, good portion of those meetings have included Commissioner Old, who asked to be advised when we were meeting, and he has attended, uh, I would say, the majority of our meetings with the department heads, and they seem to be uh, happy to see a commissioner at the budget meeting. <clears throat> A number of these are totally within the budget policies. I, you know, there are no exceptions, I guess, at this time or alternates that we've identified. <clears throat> one of those being the first one, the recorder, regular budget. There's really nothing to discuss unless there's something that the commissioners see that they would like us to get some answers for. But the basic, you know, Emphasis this year is we adjust for wages and fringes based on what's going on there. Could be changes in health insurance, longevity increases. And then we look at the other expenses and pretty much there's, if they can live with what they received last year, 2017's budget, then end of the discussion, we go on. And there are a number of departments that are perfectly fine with that. So. Good. All right. The recorder is one of those. Uh, both the... Uh, operating and the equipment account we don't have any issues any questions from the commissioners we have the advised departments that right now have it request that um, certainly we're presenting their budgets but we'd recommend they come to the consolidated hearing and, and plead their case at that time that really we're not planning to make these presentations any longer than we need to uh, third page the uh, treasurer's general fund budget. No issues there. And I got a question here. Okay. Um, on the summaries, I know you're showing the 2017 budget in that second column. It seems that's the end of the year number, but you know, shouldn't that really be the beginning of the year number? Or I we've mean, always change, used, fine, yeah. But. We've always used in these presentations. Right, I the, understand that. If, if you want us to go back and, and do that, we, we could. Saying your budget for 17 or 18 is the same as 17, mm -hmm. it should be when we started your 17 budget. 
that we we've not been presenting them that way and okay but we could do that i mean it's well, I'm something we want to take a look at the information is available there's actually a report that we shared with the departments it shows what their beginning year budget was as well as any adjustments and i mean if they if it, they stay within their budget and just move things around that's right fine. yeah but, but there are some that had increases that were were asked for was approved by the commissioner so we okay we thought that we were okay to use that but right. pete say the beginning part of that in other words when we're saying we were freezing your budget from 17 to 18 and we should be looking at that 17 number when we started out the year here's where your budget was when you when, when we passed it mm -hmm. that's the number we should be looking at yeah, I, so I, you're I, talking the second column. unless there was something that this board approved to add to their budget during the year such as you know, autopsies huh autopsies something like that uh, I'll just say if there was like a promotion during the year and something like that or <clears throat> like health insurance um, I mean say somebody wasn't on the plan but they you know but they had a qualifying event so they went from say single to family I mean sure. you gotta add that to it I mean just see I, I thought what you were inferring was not what was in 17's budget, but what was in 17's actual. Budget. No. But. Mm hmm. Well, the, the wording in the budget policy was your budget for 18 will be no bigger than your budget for 17. Right. But yeah. there's really two ways when you say we're going to spend what we spent last year. Sure. What we spent last year was 2017 actual. So if you want to, I don't know what you guys did with your calculations when you did uh, forwards for this year. Mm -hmm. Did you use the 2017 budget or did you use the 2017 actual? You probably budget. Used the actual, what you no. spent. No, the policy said budget. So you used budget? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would. If I, this was my money, I would have said, "Well, here's how much we spent last year. Let's spend that again." This That's year. always a gauge. I mean, obviously. Well, I would do it. I well, part of what part of well money. part of 17's budget was was for outside of payroll. What you actually spent the previous year. That's how much you got in your budget. Right? So part of 17's budget was based on your previous year actual spending. So, for, so in other words, we've kind of frozen, really, for outside of payroll and fringes, we've frozen the rest of your budget to what you actually spent in 16. So you think about salary it. Salary and benefits, I, I, I think, is what it is is what it is. But when you look at supplies, remember my comment on how many pencils we buy. So if I spent $58,482 last year in pencils and paper, and I'm and my budget was $73,619. Mm -hmm. Good job. This particular, this is the treasurer, did a great job. They didn't buy as much supplies. So, and when we say we're gonna give you the same amount of money as you spent last year for pencils and paper, we want you to try and hit 58,482 again. Mm -hmm. I thought what the theory was. But that's not what you're saying. What you're saying is you can buy $73,619 worth of pencils and papers. Mm -hmm. Try and do it better. Yeah, because again, just even looking at the sheet, look at 2016 actual, per se, pencils and papers and services that. 73620 Exactly. Right. Exactly. I mean, I think you want to reward folks for buying less pencils and paper, but I don't think you want to you know, this to me, this isn't freezing the budget. This is mm -hmm. saying you got another twenty thousand bucks to spend. That section four there says each office will receive a total amount for the year. That number will be the twenty seventeen approved budget. Where does it say that? Each off top of all of that one. Yeah. 
That's why we wrote it. I mean, so if we want to do that, we'd have to change that in the budget policies this year. Mm -hmm. the, um, the departments have that ability right now within their five twos to move money from one account to the other. That would not change what was in 17's original budget versus 17's year-end budget. If, oh, they, if they moved it from a 5-2 to a 5-3, that would have come through you folks. You would have had to approve it for it to happen. Any changes within wages, which is all the 5-1s, wages and fringes, even if it's from wages, to, from full-time to part-time, whatever, those kind of changes you have to approve as well as any increases or decreases in those. So pretty much. So you can't take the pencil money and put it into wages? No, no, not without, without your without approval. You guys approval, right? But you can, if the elected official decides to do that. We have to say yes. You have. We to have to say yes. Uh, official that says yes. Right. To, so they, yeah. right. But they can move pencil purchase into travel. Yeah. Five two. Five two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, th th this has always been the quandary, because. And, and this isn't Erie County, this is the United States government, it's the mm -hmm. military, it's whatever, is if you, if you save a lot of money on pencils and papers and you don't spend it, then the, uh, my understanding, I always heard this from, you know. Yeah, I know, what you're, I know where you're going. And, and they say, oh, you got to hurry up in December and spend your pencils and paper money <coughs> or they won't give it to you next year. Right. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. If you budget it for the higher number, then that I guess it is what it is. And and we should commend um, Pam Farrell for <coughs> saving twenty thousand dollars in pencils and paper. Yeah, I mean, you know, that really to us the expectation is the official is okay. Here's your budget, but you know, please don't spend it all. You right. know, and for the most part, they don't. Right. Yeah, I know last year we started off doing things one way and then we ended up changing things and certainly if that's where we need to go at some point in this budget, we have the right to do that. But Have you guys generated that long, like last year we ended up operating off of that long sheet, which had, has that been generated? Because well, that's we, when we figured out, oh man, we need to look a little harder at this. Right. Well, Once, well, yeah, when I said, look, what's the total? Yeah, well, I don't yeah. think we're there yet, are we? We're, we've, we've not put anything in there yet, but... Um, you're planning on doing that yes, again? Yes, we will. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's part of the routine. Okay. Because yeah. remember, we, we went through this last year, and it was like a light bulb went off. We're like, well, what are we wasting all our time going through all these individual things when we don't know the total? Right. We get all done, and we go, oh, yeah, that's a great idea, and we, and we end up in a <coughs> million dollars in the hole. Right. What do we do all this for? Mm -hmm. Are we a million dollars in the hole? We haven't approved anything that's, I think, at this point should put us a million dollars in the hole. But okay. you, you, I don't know whether you'll you have a request. Well, you had a lot of requests that came in. Um, and I guess we'll have to see if those all, you know, sometimes we have options that they don't realize, you know, uh, non-general fund accounts and things that we can use. Yeah, I mean, if our, if our revenues, are going to be very similar to last year's, then we should be in pretty good shape in total yes. as far as minimum budget outside of, you know, capital and additional personnel requests and that sort of thing. We should be in pretty decent shape. We've, we've seen a couple of changes in the health insurance, which if you go from a single to a family, you're talking a significant increase. I mean, you're more than doubling the cost of health care for that individual. Um, we've not seen... A large volume of those that so I mean and there's some departments that will always make a request that as I refer to it's outside the box just because they know if they don't ask you can't say yes how are in your discussions with folks the the variable is always the capital request how are those coming in you we've know, met with I the sheriff yeah we've met with the sheriff he's not we're, we're not done putting his in finished form yet. Um, he, w he will want to be here when we present his. At least that's what he's told me so far. Um, his I mean, every year we need to buy around five vehicles. Um, 
he wants um, a body scanner. I mean, th none of those are inexpensive items, but whether they all would have to come out of the general fund is, I think, something we'd have to work out with Pete. We have the we have vehicle purchase in his budget, though. Remember, we put in X number of dollars every year because he always has to buy. Well, like last year, we did, but we used. Do we use capital? Last we year? used capital. We used some of his contract money, and we used some of the general fund. Right. General fund meaning in his budget, though. Yeah, we but we had to add to it. In his budget. Well, I think last year's was probably under a hundred. I think he two cars out of the general fund last year. Yeah, it was one or two came out of capital, and one I think came out of was one of his contract accounts. I think he got a new one through insurance too, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we ended up paying for it. Remember the insurance? Oh, so insurance like covered. Yeah. Yeah. So right. The old yeah. Old yeah. yeah. We got to get that insurance company that's on TV. That the lady gets Liberty Mutual. Liberty Mutual. So we That's getting more premium. to get more than three wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that extra premium for that coverage. <laughs> Don't mention that. But over, I mean, last year we had like a million dollars in capital requests. I don't think it's coming in. At I haven't. To that. I don't have that feeling at this point. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I haven't sensed that. And we've met with the sheriff, and usually he's everything he wants. It's. An exception, they're not small items. He, he's always got a million dollars worth of dreams too. Uh, we met with Tim yesterday, and I don't, I don't think it's going to be too bad compared to what was ultimately paid for in uh, seventeen. I think it's pretty reasonable. But he, he's another one. It's tough to. It's tough to keep Tim not asking for something. Okay. To okay. the world of technology. Yes, it is. Oh. Just saves us so much money, though. Any questions on page three? Sir. <clears throat> Ed, when will you have that long sheet done? <coughs> or at least a draft that we can... We can start updating it. Okay. Because, I mean, that ended up being the most helpful yeah. guide I, I think it we had is. last year. Yeah, it's easy to look at that now yeah, when you look at it. It's the one from last year. This one? Yeah. <clears throat> uh, page four, you may recall the last couple of years we've talked about the treasurer and the uh, prosecutors, DRETAC, mainly that the prosecutor's funding has been decreasing. After having met with both the treasurer and the prosecutor, um, we had another meeting with the tr prosecutor, the treasurer, and Pete, Matt, myself. And uh, the treasurer has agreed for this year to, to pick up what's the non personnel cost out of the uh, prosecutor's DRETAC, which is mainly title, title costs. $27,000 has been the number for a number of years. Um, that and a few other changes that were made. In, the prosecutor's budget we think will put them back in the black at the end of 17 they were just about six hundred dollars in the red the prosecutor's budget is a couple more pages in but all we're noting on the treasurer's retack on page four is that she's paying an extra twenty seven thousand dollars so we're going to revisit that in six months huh? yes Good. and we happen to point out that she does have a a cash reserve that would cover several years of expenses if she did not have any new revenues. So. Yeah, I mean, the real problem is is the, the prosecutor's office <coughs> spends the, you know, when you look at the personnel t in total for what effort has gone into collecting delinquent taxes, the prosecutor's cost is like two thirds of the total wage cost and the treasurer's is a third. Sure. And that, and that causes the problem. The other thing was it was back in 2002. Well, before that, this used to be one combined fund. And somebody's lobbyist group said, no, we want to split these, one for the treasurer, one for the prosecutor. And like I said, told them at the, at the time, what well, we collect on a day-to-day -day basis in total for the whole, pro the whole program, 
if you will, is enough to cover all the expenses between both offices. It's just that, again, there's this cost difference, if you will, yeah. well, creating look, the issue. Look at the cash balance, 287. Yeah. And the prosecutors, like we said at the end of the year, was minus 600 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, if, if these, if this fund, if those two things are still combined like they were prior to 2012, there's no problem. Okay. Number five. This is the uh, treasurer's prepaid interest account. Last few years, it wasn't doing much with interest rates increasing. Starting to see some growth. She does not have anything planned for this at this time, but I think if she does come up with any exception requests, I believe we can open up this page and make some suggestions. Okay. Page six, the county auditor, general fund. There's a number of requests with this budget. And uh, the one main request, he, had, he uh, tells us that uh, Jeff Fantosi, his weights and measures person, is at that point in his life where he could retire. He hasn't said he plans to, but anyone that would take over that job would take over a year to train and work this. I'm just a conduit here, sir. Um, that's what, so he's asking that half of that position be included in the general fund, the other half in real estate. Uh, our cost includes family health insurance in the projection. Uh, it is not um, included in the regular budget, but it's listed as an alternate. Well, don't you think we ought to wait and see if Jeff's going to retire? I've shared that with other departments that from time to time make similar requests, but once we have something yeah, I, I think until someone has given us a piece of paper with a date, that's I don't even think we should consider it. You know, we might be yeah. getting a five-year commitment out of this. Sure. That's been the norm in the past. <laughs> yeah. I know like the billing office, you know, environmental services, they've had two retirements. I think we knew they were coming, but until they put it in writing, they waited and that's the way it goes. But Yeah. I don't, I don't mind doing a little succession planning, but... I mean, is, is Rick assuming there's nobody else in the state of Ohio that has a skill set that would want to come work for Erie County? I think he feels whoever it is is going to, there isn't going to be someone that will attract, steal away from somewhere else. That's, that's his philosophy. But I, mean, I know some people that retire and go back to work. For sure. <laughs> Happens all the time. Been heard of. But more than like, people? more than likely, like when Mr. Fantosi came on board, I wonder if he really had many, you know, experience in it. Probably not. You just get self-taught. Right. That's just the way it is. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure. Knowing Jeff, he'll he'll give us time. He's not going to give us two weeks' notice and leave. I mean, he knows the situation. So. Yep. No, I think Rick needs. To, yeah. So let's just. Move on then. Um, at one point, we thought Rick was going to be here today. And is that a no now, or that's just is for that the point? for the extra person? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think until we have something firm, you know, something in writing. Okay. Just leave it. There's a a few other items listed there without a a number with it. They uh, they shared their concerns for security in the office building. Um, another idea they had, I believe we include the cost of the audit through the cost allocation. He was wondering why we couldn't just direct charge that to other departments that have major costs associated with the audit. I was going to ask that, yeah, you've got the audit number the same. Well, I, you know for sure that that cost goes up. Yeah, that's what. <clears throat> How much is that cost? The audit parts. I, I'll be honest with you, I don't know what it, but I just know that, you know, <laughs> it usually goes up, you know, probably at least 5%, probably every year. But I mean, year. is it a dollar? Is it a thousand dollars? Is it a hundred thousand dollars, roughly? Does anybody know? Oh, oh, audit, 110,000. Okay. It's listed separately there. I got it. Yeah, that's. Um, <clears throat> so his. His his discussion point is 
could that 110,000 be split amongst what? For instance, environmental services will end up being a, a good chunk. You know, departments outside the general fund, of course. I think that's an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Don't you, you see what that would do? Um, why don't we look into that a little more? Now, we're going to look into that on the premise that the if the, the portion of the hundred and ten thousand comes off of his off, off the auditor's budget, of course, right? Mm -hmm. I would think so. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, I think that's. If, and it's if, interesting. I could I could see at least one elected official who's, who the majority of his budget is outside the general fund going, I'm not paying for that. I'm not yeah. going to give you money for that. Right. But like, for instance, if, you know, for instance, DOES, if, if that's a cost that they're, that those silos could pay. Mm -hmm. Again, it, it, it's very similar just to the cost allocation. This is like we've asked one elected official outside of the general fund for monies for a very similar thing, and the answer is no. Well. And, and that one elected official, you know, probably has every right to say that, I would think. But, but that doesn't mean that would happen on every case. Mm -hmm. Some of the ones we could control. Sure. And, you know, you, you know, this is a way to take and reduce general fund dollars. I understand. I, mean, I don't disagree. Yeah. Interesting. Could turn into a battle, though. Huh? Could turn into a battle, though. Well, why don't you ask him to see what that looks like, that breakdown? Let him do the work. Well, that would be more up to our cost allocation consultant to well, no, see let, what that is. No, let, the, let our financial person over there do a rough estimate then. Yeah, yeah certainly a starting point. Yeah. yeah, tell Rick that's a that's a great idea just, I don't have an, a, an idea on a specific issue other than there's some base amount of audit that the auditor obviously has to provide county auditor this is outside audit though oh these are the cost the auditors office oh, this is provide? when they come in oh okay yeah okay. this is for an external auditor to external audit yeah, yeah to write his opinion on the state of our finances. Okay. You know, yeah. one of those kind of audits, yeah. It's those two people that sit down there for months in that room and do something. Mm hmm And we get paid, we get billed for it. They're very busy. They are. What was the other suggestion? The hotel motel? They're audit. just saying that those costs could go up. At, at this point, they don't have the... So the 110 includes both? No. no, it would be part of their services budget. Well, who does the hotel motel audit cost? The local. Um, I think he spreads it around to several local accounting firms. Is that a lot of money? Um, I can't tell you for sure. I want to say it's in the tens of thousands. Could the VCB pay that? Reimburse us. Um. It's part of the administrative fee that we collect. Well, before you give them the money, take that out. That, uh, that's exactly what it goes on. So they do pay it. Before you give them a million dollars, you take 10000 out. Yes. So it's not a cost to the auditor. It comes in as a revenue to the general fund, and then the auditor contracts out expense because he's um, he's in charge essentially of the accounting of the of that tax but you said the general fund it comes in yeah this is the bed tax does that that doesn't have the general fund well yes it does this is a piece of the bed tax that hits the general fund so we have a I think it's it's either one or one and a half percent so the ten or twenty thousand that is paid to the outside auditors is that reimbursed to the general fund 
through the VCB tax. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it doesn't cost us anything. Okay. No, when you yeah, when you look at it on its own, right. So we shouldn't even put that on there. Really, it's irrelevant. Revenues are revenues and expenses are expenses. So I mean, they're anticipating it could be higher than it was last year. If it is, that's what they're trying to forewarn us. Whether that's going to push their category beyond what they've. But in the end, the VCB motel motel bed tax reimbursement. It's a uh, yeah, it's a formula with a calcul with a percentage in it, and it doesn't automatically go up just because our bill went up. It's. <laughs> Am I missing that? Is it getting paid out of the tax? Yes. They pay in the general fund, like Pete said, what's called an administrative fee. It's it's locked into a certain percent. So that amount of money comes in. It's there then to offset what we have to do through the auditor's office to administer the tax. Right. Yep. And that's how they administer it. In other words, they go out and check the uh, yes. audit these hotels that you know the amount that they're sending in is the correct yeah, I'm not amount. Asking the procedure. I'm just saying. I know. We get paid back. We do. So what about the capital request for the vehicle for weights and measures? I have that marked no, like the. Oh, they want to add a second vehicle <coughs> for this, quote, trainee. Got yeah. Is it, do they want to replace Jeff's vehicle? Or no, do they want this is addition. They want to add a second vehicle. Yes. Because yes. guys can't ride together while they're training. Apparently not. That's, yeah. So, crazy question. Well, Wasn't this in here last year? I think it was. it was. I think it did come up last year. So he still hadn't retired. So if we'd have hired him last year, he'd still be riding around in a second truck. There's an election. Wow. Okay. Number seven. Page seven. Uh, this is the uh, <coughs> auditor's other responsibility, real estate. There's some similar requests there. Um, the weights and measures and the vehicle. And then squeeze in between is there um, some positions. I believe last year the auditor's office came to the board and asked for, they had done some point factor analysis. Am I being accurate, Pete? Yeah. And there was an increase in his general fund, and then when they were looking at their real estate budget, they, they saw some similar issues, and they're asking for some merit adjustments. I think there's four people. So what what happened on supplies in seventeen? Guys, so far over. Meaning the actual? To me, that's actually something that probably came from 2000 and I want to say 16 because the actual is higher than the budget. When I see that, I usually know that's from a prior year encumbrance and it get, gets paid in the next year, but it's not out of that year's budget, it's out of the previous year's budget. Yeah, but look at 16, yeah, 78. I understand that. It was in the line item office supplies. Where the, you know, there's like five line items that are included. Most of them are basically about the same from one year to the next, but the supplies was higher. Might have been computers. I could go back and get, you know, look at the actual transactions. Didn't he do some renovations, put some stuff downstairs with the... I think if he would have used his office supplies, though, for that. 
actually Pete, that's what he did. He did uh, when they did the redecorating down to the office, he made the uh, part of that himself. It, it could have been that line item. Could be. But we, we can look that up for you. Yeah, that's what that might be. I think that's what that is. Oh, and actually, I think that was could be a piece that came back to us. Um, the other thing that's going on is, um, you know, for years and years, you know, we have this, um, oh, what is it, the GIS mm -hmm. committee or something like that. They've been running those revenues and expenses through this fund. Well, they're finally splitting that out. I think that's why, number, when yeah. you look at, say, 16 and 17 compared to 18, that's why you see 18 dropping down because those costs are now going to be are now separated in a separate agency fund if you will the one, the because we always you know everybody. yeah because you know it used to be okay let's let's go back to say 2016 and he's got an ending balance to say six hundred seventeen thousand dollars and they're in a hundred thousand of that could bend the GIS money now that's going to be segregated out because we always had that the question. GIS money paid by the various political Exactly, exactly. What's what's settlement mean? They spent thirty nine hundred dollars last year. What what I don't know what that means. It's a separate line item in his expenses. What is it though? Um, Anybody know? Well, typically. I mean, what we refer to as settlement, and it could be the expenses of doing this, is is to just, you know, they collect all the taxes and distribute it out to the political subdivisions. There's something associated with that. Actions could be a cost of that. You mean like a human being? My, uh, to me, that would be more like they're, you know, they're buying something or hiring somebody. And I don't mean an employee, like a con subcontractor or a contractor to do something. I don't know, to be honest with you. I mean, that that's a pretty big yeah. jump. 3900 bucks to 20000 And look at 20000 is more than... What he spent in 16. Well, plus his budget request was only 10. Maybe, maybe that's a mistake. Yeah, I better find out what that is. Uh, we'll get you more information on two items there. As alternate A with revised resources. The original estimate is what was built into the tax budget. Then we will revise for cash we balances. Should, we should go back in that case to the thirty-nine eighty-five. What he spent in actual right settlement if it's a contract amount. Just hire the same people to settle for thirty-nine hundred dollars. <coughs> is he putting his triennial update I think 18 is identified as a reval year so I'm guessing that but I'll get a better answer I can tell you that I know in the past what that line item was used for was when the auditor just determined that he had essentially excess money in the fund and he redistributed that back to all the political subdivisions in the past I think that's what that um, line item was for yeah that could be well, then it shouldn't be a positive, then, if it's a distribution. Well, it's an expense. It's an outflow. Well, then it's, it's not. Oh, okay. Okay. But it was rarely used. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't happen very often. Mm. So it that would be. be excess money. It could be in the past. That's what it used to be used for. I don't know what those numbers are in there for now. Yeah. That's all Which I'm would explain why it went down to thirty nine eighty five last year. They didn't give much money back. And usually those are after after the six year uh, on site reval. Yeah. Well, check into it. And see what it is. Yeah. That's something you could probably just email all of us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Page 8, Board of Elections. Jennifer has talked to us about some things coming out of Columbus in terms of having to buy things, but she doesn't have good numbers, so they're not included at this time. There is a capital account, not quite 300000 in it, as well as the uh, replacing of voting equipment. We're not talking about that at this time because right now there's no uh, matching programs to help offset the costs like it's been done in the past. Year-to-year um, -year comparisons with the Board of Elections never work just because elections change every year. So you go back and I was trying to drag her back to 2014 and she said there's been a lot of technology requirements since 14. So we came up with these numbers and she feels comfortable. I don't think she's someone that's going to spend the money just because it's in her budget. Any questions on page eight? I mean, that's a lot of money. That's $100,000. Oh, compared to the last 17? Yeah. yeah. But every two years, see. There wasn't a big election last year. Right. Last year, there was only one one election. Yeah. This the year, there's two. Gubernatorial. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a two-year cycle. Ballots. One year, it's one mandatory election. The next year, two. Next year, one. The next year, two. Have a and every four is presidential. Yeah. No. So. The only question I've got, Ed, is on the salaries and benefits. That number's up a fair amount. That usually doesn't. Well, they were missing. Fluctuate. They were missing a person for like oh, half the year. Oh, a staff gotcha. person, and then with the change in the board makeup, the cost of the insurance went up. Okay. All right. That's kind of yeah. what I was thinking. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you're right. The staffing hasn't been Consistent steady the management. last several years. Yeah. And they, they were, they were have, a three-person crew for a yeah, quarter of the year. Right. They've right. also been advised at this point that they can expect at least $8,900 in unemployment in 18. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Just know nobody was happy about. Yeah. Okay, number yeah. nine. This is the, uh, the funding we provide to regional planning. Same. They're, yeah, they're the same. They're fine. They know if something comes up out of the ordinary. We're here for them. Yep. Number 10. Prosecutor. Um, at the last minute, they advised they wanted to uh, mm -hmm. install timekeeping, which is the 3787. There's a couple of departments that are asking for that feature through the auditor system to be added to their budgets. <clears throat> That's interesting. As I understand, when the individual signs into their computer, it's like punching a clock. It's out there in other departments, but I guess for each new install, it's somewhere around $3,000 or something. Seems a little. Uh, makes you wonder why you chose finance. But, anyways, uh, all right. There's more than one. Uh, the other item was in other years when we've had one time payments, the grants for the victims advocate program, those grants do not allow for one time payments, bonuses. Last year, the bonuses were authorized by the commissioners to come out of the general fund. And they're asking for that again. There's five people involved, so that is a request. But they were in last year's budget, so yeah. It's it's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. I don't like them to disappear and become a mystery. So okay, and then you got a couple of questions, Mark, on the serving our seniors investigator. Just so you know, <clears throat> we had a person. Um, and we you know first as we started out at a trial. Basis SOS paid 100%, and they said we, it's justified. We need to go forward with it. We split the cost 50 50. Uh, that investigator since then has left employment, 
mm -hmm. and has been replaced, but with a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I guess that's why the question marks are there is right now we don't have what anything in there for that we person? have no cost for that no uh, revenue the, coming in either right yeah no income no outgo right. um, Let's just the contract that. is still good I suppose theoretically something could change but they seem to be happy with the volunteers so. and as long as the volunteer wants to continue to volunteer it works for me we're good. Yeah. If that changes we have, may have to come back mm -hmm. right <clears throat> Page 11, we were talking earlier about the DRETAC. This is the prosecutors. The uh, excludes the 27000 that the treasurer is going to pay. That's just it's really the only exception. Okay. okay. Clerk of Courts. So Veda has one of these. She says this is a definitely going to happen. Um, a person will be retiring sometime around mid-year. So they're anticipating replacing that person. The person they are pretty sure they're going to hire will need family insurance. And so they're putting us on notice that when all that happens, their health insurance bill is going to go up. But again, nothing is black and white. What are you doing down at the bottom, funders, um, supplies, what's all that? Lebeda tells us if I don't ask, you guys can't say yes. So she has a few exceptions. The one item, that $960, I believe that item is already, that agreement came through already. So that might be kind of hard to say no on that, but when you look at the, the budget versus actual, 27 versus the 44 and that. She did say she'd come to the consolidated hearing to leave her case. I guess I'm not I'm not following you. The I understand the insurance, the supplies, mm -hmm. office dues, repairs and travel 2736. What what is that? I don't know what that means. She wants an additional 20 $2,736 added to the budget. She the has budget. adjusted some of those line items up a little bit, some down a little bit. The largest increase, I believe, is in travel. Yeah, but those are all five twos. And she's asking for more travel funds, basically. <clears throat> I think just let's try and stay where we're at. Don't you think? I'm not saying I'd recommend it. Yeah, because you, I mean, otherwise yeah. you're opening the door for everybody to say that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Unless right. there was yep. a, a missed timing on a payment out of services, I mean, spent 27 last year and got a budget of 44. Yeah. Why don't you reduce that one and increase the other one? Right. Um, it's pretty simple to me. Yeah. This is another one of those timekeeping requests. That's what the 33 on the bottom is for. Uh, but yeah, when you wait, when, wait, when you look at the actual expenses, it makes you wonder. I see what you're saying. The budget request and services of 133,000. Is that a mistake? That's a tax budget. That's what? Tax, tax budget. budget. What's that mean? It's kind of a wish list at times. That's our, our mid-year wish, li wish list for the next year. 133,000. Uh huh. From 27,000. What was what was we wishing for there? Got me. I'd have to go back and I mean I can tell you, but off the top of my head, I don't. <clears throat> well, I guess maybe we don't. Oh, you know what? I know, but I know what it was. That the portal. Well, the Three. yeah, the kiosk. Kiosk. Yeah, that's oh, right. That's right. But that was only forty no, that, or fifty thousand. I mean, no, no, that no, was, it was more. It was a hundred. I think when it was when you got when you factored in the. The buy the thing and then the the, uh, the, the money to throw in for the jury duty fees. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably that was a year before. Uh, was that was last, last year. year. No, it was last year. Mm -hmm. Even though it had come up, say the, the year before, there was talk about it. I don't think there was an official budget request at the time, mm -hmm. but it, that's been out there floating around for several years. Mm -hmm. So she's happy with this. What's on the top? 
and hoping for what's on the bottom. She'll she'll make do. I mean, right. I think she really wanted the Lexus Nexus and the time clock. I. I in this situation, I think the, the actual, I looked at the carryover encumbrances, I don't see where the full 44 got used up. So we're thinking in 17 or even paid out. Of, you know, so I, yeah, I, the only thing is, is in 16, that's where the number was, though. Right. But Can't the law library pay her Lexus Nexus? She said no. They, this is for, theirs is for the law books and this is for finding addresses it's like a yeah this is it's a totally different can't the lawyers need the addresses too that i don't know Gary? I'm they, they would have their own purposes for looking up addresses for example if on an old case trying to find somebody to pay court costs things like that you know yeah. yeah, trying to collect the you know, overdue debts to the clerk's office i just i I'm just questioning, can they pay it if they chose to do that? Can the clerk's office already? Can, uh, the, law library. Library. can the law library pay that? Here's here's a license for you, clerk. Did they volunteer to do that? Yes, sir. Yeah. I don't know if that's, uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. They're a private organization. I suppose they could do what they want, but that would be some kind of contribution to the I don't think they've run office. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they've ever paid anything out of their funds for any of the other departments that I know of. I don't think so either. No. <clears throat> Having them pay for it, you may, that may be a stretch. Given what everything else is going on with them, I'm not sure if they'd be in the mood for that. No, I think they're very excited, so. I don't know. I haven't heard one. Yeah. one anything one way or the other. But. Okay. But yeah, right. yeah she, she has expressed interest that the consolidated hearing and being able to plead her case. So. Yeah. Number 13. The, uh, the title for the clerk's office. These are not real large requests, but the one, uh, the handicapped door is, is the largest part of the services. She got a quote from Gary. Uh, will now on what it would cost. I think it's like $2,600 of that. So it's essentially one of those automatic door Correct. Type things. Yeah. We're almost required to have that though, aren't we? Yeah. Where's, where, where's this door at? This would be their front door the from, in the hallway. But we just did all that remodeling. <clears throat> Not the door. The door the is door. a... Not the front door. We just did all that remodeling. <laughs> Why would we do the door of that? I don't know. Good question. I believe. Why don't Why don't you see if that's uh, required? Because I think if if you come back and if you do it there, then you probably should do it everywhere. Yeah, my guess is it's probably grandfathered in until you do something. Yeah, I would think so too. And usually, you don't have to change it until you start to change it, and then you got to comply. But I don't, I'll, I don't I'll know. find out. I mean, if it's required, then I think we should do it everywhere. Yeah, typically do it they don't place. make you come in and change stuff until you do, you know, until you start to change something and then you have to comply while you're making a change. As long as you don't change anything, you don't typically have to Are the, are the jurors, catch up. the jurors go down there and check in, don't they? They and do. Then, grand, the, the grand jury does because okay. they meet up in the third floor, regular jurors over in the courthouse. But once a month, the grand jury checks in because right. that's a part of the clerk's office. Well, why don't why don't you look into that? Okay. All right. Is that it for 13? Yep, 14. Met with uh, Eric and Celine. They said they're fine with our current contribution. They're Alternative resources aren't overly abundant these days, but um, in, in fact, in the past, we've noted the match was more like 78%. It's down to 71%. So. It's up to 78? It used to be 78. Yeah. Oh, okay, it's down to 71. 71, yeah. Because there's nothing else that they're 
Why is the 18 budget for salary so low? We illustrate where our money goes that we give them, and then we also illustrate their total budget that oh. has already been mm -hmm. submitted nice. by their board. Okay. Uh, for all, for all their things that they do. Yeah. We more course. or less like cover a couple of people. Yeah, so in other words, that 18 budget column, that's where we just look at, okay, what what is the county giving you? What's the state going to give you with that? And what we can fund. We don't fund all their employees. <laughs> Obviously, some are on grants. Oh, I see. All the other columns, we show what that fund actually does. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I know it's a little confusing, <laughs> but. Makes sense. And by us giving them like 102,000, it generates that match of 71 or 73,000. So that's why those right. numbers are listed together. It's not all coming from us, but. Okay, number 15. Okay. Dog and kennel. She's fine. She had a. Uh, a concrete project that we backed out of her 18 numbers it was over $10,000. So. She was a little concerned she's got to put new tires on one of her vehicles. It's $400. But. Yeah, the issue here you're seeing is a, is a continued draw on her fund balance. We're deficit spending here. When's her debt fall off? Do you know? She's got to be getting close. Mm, no. She's got, I think, at around five years, maybe? Four years? Yeah. Yeah, we issued that debt in 2007. So, 2008 through. 20 year? 20 year. So, 2027. So nine more years, eight or nine. I'm trying to think. Financeable. We just did. Take a look at the numbers in here. <clears throat> For 2017, well, 786,000 was the budget. <laughs> the debt was 487,000. That's the way we had to show it because of the refinancing that we yeah. did. She would have been at the 55269 for debt, which is under the budget request column right in the middle. And by the refunding, it went down to 51. So, I mean, it helped out. Yeah. But it's still debt. But not much. $5,000? Right. 4000 <coughs> Yeah. So she's down about twenty grand a year, roughly. Yeah. Twenty-five. Mm-hmm. Which equates to about two bucks a tag. What do you think? We can keep doing this for a while, but it, I mean, in two, three, four years, we're gonna have to raise the rates again. Unless there's a major shift in the, you know, in our costs. Population? Yeah, or our, or our internal costs. Yeah. Which is 90% salary and benefits. Outside of debt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> You had your own hearing? Yeah. Okay. We, we were hoping page 16 would be the last, but then we, we realized we missed the law library, so we didn't want to renumber all the pages. Page 16 has got to be redone all over again. Yeah, there's... We're just happy to be here. Page 17, when we met with the law library, one of their uh, 
board members was there and they have a few questions they don't necessarily have answers for in terms of numbers I think they did question legally what can they pay for stuff like that Uh, as far as the consultant fees to evaluate a new location, they undertook that on their own, so I don't know why. I'm thinking that is yeah. that they're covering that they themselves. They were comparing the last time they moved. Yeah. That was part of the process, I guess. Well, I think we've kind of explained to them, okay, we're going to take care of your remodeling costs. Uh, we, we, we're going to cover the moving expenses with our own staff and maybe some volunteers from uh, the hotel back there and, um, matter of fact I got I guess they've been told that their existing uh, furnishings will not fit so that's as far as the uh, the bookcases things like that yeah well, I do have a call into the board president uh, see where they're at with this study you know they came out and presented talked to us about that because they should the, that date has passed the 45 yeah, days yeah yeah that they should we should be hearing something so I, I've got to call into them to to discuss it to where we're at yeah because we're gonna have to move but basically the county's covering the moving expenses and covering the cost of the remodeling yeah although I I would I would wonder why they wouldn't pay this when we're in such desperate need it would be certainly would be they nice eighty thousand dollars sitting there with no <clears throat> visible means of what they're going to do with it they, you'd, you'd hope they could help the taxpayer out yeah I mean between 16 and 17 they've just generated some surpluses so I mean I don't know why they couldn't help us out a little bit I'm not asking for a lot Oh, and we're moving them out of a basement into the first floor. Prime real estate. Okay. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys have done a lot of work, and thanks for everything you've done so far. Keep up the good work. And uh, we think we'll have think all four guns blazing maybe by next week. So. Well, I think I think you, you really need to start thinking about that long paper. Because we're oh, yeah. going to have to think about this total. Right. But the trend this year is a lot different than it was last year. So that's due to your efforts and the departments that you're meeting with all working together to fix this problem. Other than the extreme heat at the motor vehicle gas tax, everything's been pretty easy. Uh, the folks have been, you know, good to work with. They understand the circumstances, and really there hasn't been any major issues at this point so okay good, good cooperation so you think you're going to have a, another big handful of these to go through next week that's the plan yes and you think you're going to have a long paper next week we'll get you a long paper okay all right there may be there may maybe a fair amount of holes in that yeah oh yes yeah there's some departments that we, we're playing a lot of tag with yeah um, but you'll plug in their 17 numbers so all else fails yeah 17 works again yeah but um, right now at this point in terms of either having met or scheduled a meeting we've got two judges and a coroner to work out yet but other than that I mean, and Brian's usually not and we're supposed to be done next week as far as initial meetings with departments and stuff yeah that's what I keep telling when they say when do we have to meet I said January Okay, we want the resolutions. Yep. Uh, resolution of the county commissioners entering into an agreement with CHS Therapy. Second. Sorry, CHS Therapy. Okay, thank you. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Uh, authorizing payment to ESP for services provided to services. Second. Mr. Monahan. Yes. Mr. Old. Yes. Yes. Authorizing the county auditor to make interfund transfers. Second. Mr. Monahan. Yes. Mr. Old. Yes. Mr. Chenigo. Yes. Authorizing the county auditor to make interfund transfers. Second. Mr. Monahan. Yes.
Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Schoenbaum? Yes. Authorizing the drawing of warrants and payments. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Yes. Uh, services provided to the Department of Environmental Services. Second. Is that payment to a DECO? Uh, yeah, a DECO. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Uh, authorizing payment to Erie County Board of Commissioners for supplies provided to the Sheriff's Office. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Uh, entering into an agreement with automation mailing and shipping solutions. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Entering certain <coughs> county equipment surplus and ordering to be sold. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Authorizing payment to Erie County Treasurer for supplies provided to the Department of Environmental Services. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Entering into agreement with FP Mailing Solutions. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Extending the time for the sale of dog tags through February the 5th. All right. I'll definitely second that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. got to mention that, yeah, I want to steal Barb's thunder she usually <laughs> makes with on that. <laughs> Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Um, authorizing payment to Pogemeyer Design Group for services provided to the EOES. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenigo? Yes. Declaring certain items surplus and ordering to be sold or discarded. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Authorizing payment to uh, Lakeside Laundry Equipment for supplies. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Entering into agreement with Life Safety Services. Second. Mr. Yes. Monahan? Yes. yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. I should have two more. I got them. Pete, um, explain both of these. Let me hand them to you. Both of those subsidy grant agreements through yeah. Tito. They appear to be two different ones from Judge Tito. Yeah, they are. They are two different grants. Okay. I attached. One's one hundred thirty-six thousand, and another one I couldn't. Find. Yeah, they've added oh, additional funding. It tells you in here what how much they increased it. That's what I thought. 84,511. To that. So they're yeah. increasing it by 338. I understand that this covers a two year period. But was that, is that a new thing? No, actually, no. I, I attached the old no, agreement that we signed with them last year. Yeah, matter of fact, it, it says um, this is the intensive supervision program, non residential felony. felony. Yeah. And this is Mr. In other Miller. words, keeping them out of prison. For, on felonies. So is this the F5 felon story on the new, mon new money? No, that's yeah. TCAP. That's, TCAP. that's TCAP. different one. Sorry, that's yeah. different one. Different one. Different Have one. we heard on that one? I, I, haven't heard, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything, but it should be active, up and running. Well, if it's up and running, then it, is the cash coming in? I would hope so. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't looked. Okay. I mean, I can look in the auditor's yeah, records. Okay. You know, but those are those are two those are those are the two existing grants that we've had like forever. Okay. Okay. Um. Entering into an addendum to the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections uh, Corrections Program 408 subsidy grant agreement. Second. Mr. Monahan. Yes. Mr. Old. Yes. Mr. Shenango. Yes. Entering into an agreement to the Ohio Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections uh, for year 2018-19, uh, based on Program 407 subsidy grant agreement. Second. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Thank you. That's it. 
Motion to go into executive session regarding pending litigation. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Move we adjourn. Second. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Monaghan? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah, get the, get, get the bid.